What is up guys? Welcome to a Milky Way episode. I'm so excited. I haven't seen the Milky Way. It seems like since I did the uh, photographing the Milky Way with the phone back in like April or May. And it's like mid-July now because it's been monsoon season. Which I am very thankful for. Living in the desert, getting lots of water and lightning. All oh, the lightning stuff. Do you guys like more than astrophotography you should check out my lightning monsoon videos from this year i've been very happy with that anyways what are we doing tonight tonight it's the first night like i said in a couple months that the milky way is out we have no clouds but the downside is we only have well we only have one hour until uh, the moon comes up. What I want to do is I'm going to photograph the lagoon and trifid, trifid nebula, nebulae, nebulae, nebulae. And they're really close to each other. Comparatively speaking, they're about one and a half degrees apart. Um, and as you'll know from astrophotography, the moon is about a half a degree. So they're about three full moons apart okay so i think that's gonna lend itself nicely to a wide field astro shot so the idea for the series that i had i want to photograph the lagoon and trifid nebula nebulae i'm going to start with nothing but a camera and a tripod and then I want to like work my way up to some various tracker and lens and everything options. Okay, so R6 and 70-200 f4, nice and light lens. This is really going to help out when I start getting my trackers uh, going. But we're not doing that tonight. Uh, tonight it's just R6, 70-200 f4 wide open and we're probably going to be looking at two second exposures maybe three second exposure tops um, but first what i need to do is set up my rp with my 16 millimeter so that i can get a little time lapse going the buggies really like the loom cube lights but at least they're not on camera lady this time. Or are they? Or oh, they are. <laughs> okay. So we got that. So I'm going to go put this uh, somewhere where these lights aren't going to mess with it. So let me go run up there real quick and get this time lapse started. And then we'll be right back. All right, so the RP and the 16 millimeter time lapse is going. So hopefully you guys will have a nice little time lapse B-roll for that. Next up, R6, 7200. How are we going to find? We're going to look for the Lagoon Nebula. That's, uh, wow, camera lady just chunked her glasses <laughs> because a bug landed on them do you even do you see your glasses all right hold on hold on hold on there they are over there to your one o'clock twelve o'clock one o'clock one o'clock stop down down to your right under your phone there they are all right that was fun i think we'll just leave that in this is this is our life. Okay, so anyways, as I was saying, um, Lagoon Nebula is M8, Messier 8. And we're just looking at our handy dandy sky app right here. And I can see it right there. Oh, you know what? Here. Let me just screen record for you guys real quick. Okay. So we are rolling. So now hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. So here is M8 right in the center there under the ecliptic. 
Uh, and if we, I don't think we can zoom, oh, we can zoom in, look at that. So when we zoom in, you see M20 right there above it. So that distance between those two, between M8 and M20, is a degree and a half-ish, I think. Uh, and that's what we want to see. We want to see, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We want to see both of those. 300 would be better, uh, but I can crop into 300 if I need to. I'm just, since I'm doing no tripod, I want to try to get a little bit more in there. So we need to go higher. Um, the Lagoon Nebula is uh, magnitude 6, so it's, it's quite bright, actually. And look, there it is. So that's it right there. Um, that's a good that's a good start. But that was at 70 millimeters, and that's just one shot. I'm at ISO 102,400 um, because I'm just trying to see and get everything framed up and everything, and that is looking pretty darn good. Okay, so I have the focus assist on, so everything is in red when it's in focus, but even still, when you look at the back of the screen and you see all those red dots, the, the longer your focal length is, the, the less you can trust that. So I really had to zoom in to 10 times, and a, a trick is to look for the chromatic aberration will appear a little bit of coma around the stars. You, you want them to get as pinpointed as possible, and then when they are pinpointed, uh, you should be able to see a little bit of chromatic aberration. That's just kind of a double uh, goodness to let you know that you're in focus. So then we can go back and check and see. I mean, there it is. That's looking potentially usable. It's looking pretty dark, actually. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and go up to 25,600. I will be stacking these, so noise reduction is going to help, but it's still not completely ideal. Especially with those clouds right now. Luckily, uh, the programs that I'm going to be using stacking, I can filter those out and only pick the good ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up the time lapse for a one second interval. It's basically just the shortest interval I can set. That way it just constantly takes pictures. And I'm going to let that go. I think that's all that we're going to do out here. So let's go back, jump back into the studio once we get all this stuff. And I'm going to walk you through the processing and see if we can't get anything decent. So hopefully this will be a good start to the series. And I'm, I'm not expecting an award-winning image here especially with you know no tracker and no polar alignment none of that stuff but i am curious because you know i think this is what is accessible to a lot of people with just a camera and a medium length lens and let's see what we can do So back in the studio, I've got all the images uh, separated and, and done out and everything and ready to go. I've actually already stacked and edited them and I kind of forgot to uh, start the screen recorder. So I'm rather than go through and edit the entire thing again, I'm just going to go through step by step and show you what I did so that you can see the changes um, and hopefully maybe that'll give you an idea of helping you how to edit these kind of shots. Okay, so let's jump in here and I've got them all sorted out to 200 millimeters. I did a couple, um, I did one set at 25,600 ISO and one set at 51,200. And I think the 51,200 came out looking better 
So we can see here uh, F4, two and a half seconds, 51,200 ISO. Got them all. There was a lot of them. So let's come down here and we'll open up the PSD that I saved. Okay, so here is the PSD. So let's just go turn everything off. All right, so here's the TIFF file that I got uh, right out of Deep Sky Stacker. So by default too, um, you'll have to come in here and you'll have to go to image and mode because by default it's set to 32-bit and you can't edit anything really in 32-bit. So you have to switch it to 16-bit. Um, so that was the first thing I did. And then I switched it to exposure and gamma. So the first thing that we do in astrophotography is we do things called stretches. And let me say also that I am not by any means <laughs> an expert or very good at all at deep sky editing. So, you know, don't take what I do as, you know, the, the default or best way to do things. You know, if you want to see more stuff on that, then go look up like Nico Carver or Trevor or something from Astro Backyard. People that know a lot more than I do about this stuff, but I do like to play around. So the first thing we're doing is we are stretching these levels. And what we're doing is pulling, we're pulling data that's hidden in there kind of out. So we've got the first three layers of stretching here and we're brightening it up a little bit. We're pulling this data in. And then I did a control, I mean, I did a, a stamp visible layer and then took it into camera raw and did a little bit of dehaze and just a pinch of clarity. Uh, and then we get a couple of color correction channels for not color correction, but channel mixers just to enhance the, uh, the red nebulosity around the lagoon and a little bit around the trifid. And then we got some more stretching going on, same deal. And then another control, another stamp visible layer with a little more uh, tweaking in camera raw with a little more color saturation tweaking. And then we've got some more stretching and then some more selective color and color saturation tweakings there to uh, really bring out that as much of that red nebulosity as we can. And then finally, a little bit more stretching. And then the last thing I did was I went into Luminar Neo and just added a little bit of AI um, structure enhancement and a little bit of Orton effect kind of thing. And you don't need to do that stuff in Neo. This isn't sponsored in any way, shape or form. That's just part of my workflow. It's what I've been using for years um, and I, I like it. So there's a lot of things that are not great about this image. And there's a lot of things that I could still stand to clean up. So for instance, we have these dark areas here um, and they're kind of magenta So, you know, I could, I guess I could come in here and just pull out some of the reds and the magentas. And then I can invert that and just get my brush tool. And now I can paint that in just on the edges so that that stuff doesn't look so harsh. Whoops. <laughs> A little excessive clicking there. So, I mean, that's subtle, but you know, there's a lot of other problems with this too. I, I would arguably say I pushed it too hard, um, but I'm okay with that. And I just really wanted to see, I just really wanted to see what I could get out of this situation with no tracker and no astro modded 
like I said in the video, this stuff right here, there's a lot more nebulosity that if you look up real images of the lagoon and trifid nebulas, um, you'll see a lot more of the nebulosity and a lot more of the red emissions from people who are using H-alpha filters um, or astro-modded cameras like that. But this is what we can do with basic setup with just a camera, a lens, and a tripod. And I think that is really impressive for a starting image and that especially that some you know most people could get into if you've already got some basic gear so next up in the series we're definitely going to step it up a little bit and i'm going to do the same shot but with a tracker and then i want to put my 800 millimeter on a tracker and shoot just one or two of those uh, separately just the lagoon nebula and just maybe the trifid nebula separately at 800 millimeters so stay tuned maybe for the progression of those i think hopefully they'll be pretty cool and then we'll have a basis to compare it to because you know this on its own maybe if you just see this image and have never seen anything like it before it might look pretty cool and it does definitely uh, but when you start seeing real images and images with trackers and astro modded cameras and you know longer focal lengths and stuff like that you we're going to have this as a basis for comparison so stick around and oh um, i also did this image so i did this image here and that was at 70 millimeters with the 70 to 200. Um, this one was stacked but not tracked it was the same same night and i think that one came out really good so you can see here the lagoon nebula and the trifid nebula so this is just wider you can see dark horse there um, i think it came out really cool on the members channel, I just posted a members video for the full editing and walkthrough and everything. So if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to see some extra BTS and get some extra benefits and, and help support the channel, you can check out the channel memberships and you'll be able to see stuff like that. But that's going to wrap it up. It's definitely lunchtime. It's tea time. If you have any questions about anything that I did here, let me know. Maybe uh, if I get enough interest, I will do a separate tutorial on deep sky tracker by itself um, that was just a totally separate thing but yeah other than that if you have questions leave them in the comments below and i will definitely answer them hit that like button for me if you stuck around this far i really appreciate it and that's the best thing you can do for my channel all right wish me luck for clear skies tonight because i'm going back out again and i will see you hopefully in the next video